G'day fellas, welcome back to another video on the African expansion that's been recently released. In this video, we're going to be looking at a very highly requested topic, and that is an African unit civilization tier list. So we're going to be taking a look at all the African units here. Now you'll notice that there's a couple of additions, there's a couple of omissions, so we'll be talking about all the units, going through them and sitting them all on this tier list and find out exactly where they are. At the top of the tier list is the US tier, that is going to be your best units. In the bottom tier, you're going to see your D tier units. It's going to be your worst. So we'll start off with the best units first. Uh, and no one would be disagreeing with this one at all. We're going to be starting off with the Gascania. So for anybody who's played against Ethiopia, they'll know the true power of the Gascania. Longer range, very cheap cost, a, a very fast rate of fire as well. These units are quite strong against cavalry in hand attack. They're, they're typically like your musketeer unit. Uh, but uh, as they get closer to enemy units, they're also going to be firing faster. They synergize incredibly well with the next unit, which I'm also going to be putting in the S tier, and that is the Cannoneer. Now, normally you don't actually have access to this unit, uh, but with the Portuguese uh, Alliance, you are going to gain access to it, and it's going to allow you to train it. And that's why I'm including it on this tier list. I'm not including, you know, things like the native allies that you, you technically you can train, but because you can have infinite amounts of the Cannoneer, that's why I'm including it on the tier list. So the next unit that we're going to be putting up in the S tier is the Lafiti Rider. So the Lafiti or the Lafiti Knight rather. So the Lafiti Knight is a unit for the Hausa and it is exactly what you want a hand cavalry to be. It's got very high HP and it's got dual resist with an especially high resist against ranged uh uh, ranged attack and that, that's exactly what you want in a tanky sort of cav unit it's a very nice frontline unit because all of the enemy units are going to be focusing down that unit it's got the higher hp it's got the uh the higher uh, resist and on top of that it's also got a nice upgrade card that allows it to do that area of effect damage uh the unit is an incredibly strong unit it's a not too expensive either uh, it's also two population as well which means that you're able to really spam these out in the late game even in team games, this this is the, uh, this is the only hand cavalry that I advocate people actually make in team games. I don't even advocate that you make the gendarme or the cuirassier, but the Lafiti knight, go ahead, make as many as you like. The next unit that we're going to be putting on this tier list is the big boy, aka the Sebastopol mortar. Now, I'm sure you've probably seen this guy hanging around. He is at the moment just a little bit too strong, uh, probably like most of the units that I've already put up here. The Sebastopol Mortar is one of those units that, uh, well, let's just say, you take one step too far and the Sebastopol Mortar gets a shot off, well, you've just lost half your army. Need I say any more? The next unit that we're going to be talking about is the Desert Raider. So the Desert Raider is a mercenary unit that both civilizations have got access to. This unit is uh, the same cost as an Ulan, 50 food, 100 coin. And this guy is absolutely insane. So I, I don't know whether he's bugged at the moment, but he's got double the siege rate of fire than any other unit in the game. So most units, they take three seconds to throw a, a, a torch when they're sieging a building. This unit takes 1.5 seconds, which means that it's 20 siege actually becomes 40 siege. In addition to that, it also does 30 siege damage in melee, which means that it bypasses melee resists. So all of those villages that you see out on the map and they've got the 20% melee resist, this guy goes straight through it. So it means he can five shot uh, enemy villages. So a very, very strong unit. The next unit that we're going to be talking about is the Desert Warrior. So the Desert Warrior is another mercenary, or another outlaw unit rather. Uh, this unit is able to change its stance based on uh, the enemy that it's coming up against. If it's coming up against a melee unit, then it is going to be uh, having melee resist when you put it into melee. So it's going to go in the S tier as well. Uh, it's got a very low cost, high, high population cost. So you don't want to be spamming these in the late game, but in the early game, very strong a very nice rate of fire. So uh, another unit that is, uh, uh, you know, I I'm a big fan of this unit. I think it's incredibly uh, strong and, and a great counter uh, to, to things like, you know, they, they serve definitely very well as a counter to cavalry. Now, one of the units that also serve well as a counter to cavalry uh, and artillery in particular are the Griots. Now, these guys, in my opinion, they're underrated. Some people will probably be saying, you know, Griots are at best A tier. I think the Griot, though, it's an S tier unit. And the reason why it's an S tier unit is because there's actually an upgrade that allows you to get an area of effect uh, bonus that goes all the way. Like, you, you can you can use them in, in different ways, but essentially, my favorite way is you get that area of effect bonus, you get five Griots out, you start tooting at the opponent, and when you toot at your opponent, it's just going to enable uh, your forces to overwhelm your opponent because they're going to be firing at half the rate. So it's that big debuff uh, that's uh, going to be in there. 
So the next unit that we're going to be talking about is the Aromo uh, Warrior. Now, um, we'll just put it in the D tier and we'll move along. Uh, the next unit that we're going to be talking about is the uh, Neftenia. Now, the Neftenia has got a very high HP, a very, uh, no, I wouldn't say a low attack, a moderate attack, uh, expensive cost, but for its population space, it's actually an incredibly strong unit. Uh, so if you can actually build up a mass of these, they're quite good. They compete with Forest Prowlers, they can compete with State Militia, so a, a really strong unit, and a, yeah, a, honestly, a, a great uh, unit. So that also is going to be going in the S tier. Uh, the next unit uh, that's also a ranged unit, uh, combina combines very well with the Neftanya, is the Javelin Rider, so this is also going to be going in the S tier. Uh, so the S tier is a particularly... Uh, I, I mean, it's looking a little bit packed at the moment, but uh, look, I, I think it's probably about right at the moment. So with the Javelin Rider, the Javelin Rider is a one population unit. It is a cheap unit. It has very high uh, bonuses against cavalry and artillery, which is exactly what you want it for. The problem is with this unit, the reason why it's so potent is because it's got that very high HP pool as well. A lot of good upgrades for this. There's two cards for Ethiopians, one card for the Hausa, so you can get higher resist, you can get higher attack, higher HP as well. Overall, this unit is just incredibly strong. Now, the next unit that we're going to be uh, talking about is the Zebu Cattle. Now, the Zebu Cattle, um, it's a little bit below the Sanga Cattle, and the reason why is uh, the Sanger Cattle, the horns are larger, so the Sanger Cattle is going to go into S tier, the Zebu Cattle is going to go into A tier. Both, oh, you know what, I kind of, I'll, I'll put the Zebu Cattle here and I'll move the, the Sanger Cattle can go above the Javelin, I think that's probably right. Uh, the next unit that we're going to be talking about is the Amir. Now, a lot of you guys are probably going to be wondering, hold on a minute, you're putting the Amir, which is the Hausa Explorer, onto the tier list. Where's the Raz? Well, Ethiopia's got enough stuff already on this tier list that's overpowered so i figured i'd just put one of the explorers that's overpowered which is going to be the ethio or the house of one just because well they don't have as many overpowered units so this explorer for anybody unfamiliar is the ex the best explorer in the game it's fast it's pretty it can't possibly be beaten so that's why it goes in the s tier now in addition to fast pretty and can't possibly be beaten we've also got these two guys down here now, these two guys uh, represent the Yoruba. Now, the Yoruba, you might be wondering, what's that, Drongo? How do I get that? That sounds cool. Well, you're indeed right. It's part of the new natives, but uh, the Hausa in particular are what make this so strong. So you can't train these. They probably shouldn't be on the tier list. These guys are so good that they go to the top of S tier. So you can, with these units, you double, like, they, they, they double. They, they literally, they, they're like bacteria. They just go, boop, boop, like, like cells. You know, it's like you're watching them on a microscope. They just double. You get a big shipment of 16 of them in the fourth age, and they just double. Double. Just like that. They just, boop. Anyway, next unit. It doesn't double, but it's double as fun. And that's the Gatling gun. The Gatling gun is a very fun unit. Very cool. Uh, it's got a Gatling gun, and it's a camel, and it runs very fast. It's got a 16 range on it, which isn't too bad. You can train these as the Ethiopians once you hit age 5. So you're going to be using it in most of your games. That's also an S tier unit, just simply because it is a Gatling camel, and there's nothing really cooler than a Gatling camel. Now we move on to the last couple units, and these units... Look, I think it's probably just best we just put these in the S tier as well, and we just finish the video up here because I feel like we've probably taken too long. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll catch you guys in the next one.